Now we're going to look at solving non-homogeneous systems of differential equations using the method of variation of parameters. Previously, we solved the homogeneous system x prime equals ax. but not the non-homogeneous system. x prime equals ax plus b. The method of variation of parameters allows us to solve this non-homogeneous system even when A is a matrix of functions of T. But we're only going to use it for A, a matrix of constants. So the method has several steps. First step is let's let x, or we could write x of t, be a fundamental matrix. For the homogeneous system. So x prime equals ax with no plus b on it. So that is, the columns are x1 of t, x2 of t, etc., up to xn of t, and they form a fundamental set of solutions to each. Remember, fundamental set means it's a basis of the solution space. It's a basis of the solution space to the homogeneous system. And step two, we're going to find a vector u bar satisfying x u bar equals b. Actually, so, so b can be a vector of, of functions of t. So we have our system x prime equals ax plus b, which possibly could be b of t. You could have functions of t there. And we've got the homogeneous system x prime equals ax. a is constant. All right, so we'll find u satisfying this system of equations. We've got two choices of how to do that. So we can do this by row operations or Kramer's rule.
Then step three is we integrate. So we're solving u prime. So to get u, we integrate u prime, and we can let the constant of integration be 0. Then we define our particular solution to be the fundamental matrix times u. Maybe I should put a bar of this because it's a, a vector of functions. And then all solutions are xp, which we just computed this way, plus all linear combinations of the fundamental set of solutions to the homogeneous differential equation system. So let's do an example of this. Unfortunately, I can't leave the instructions on the board because they take up the whole board. But I'll say them as we go along. So for example, let's, oh actually I want to justify this first. Before we do an example, let me say, why does this work? So let's set up the pieces. So let's let x, which is a matrix of functions of t. Let's suppose this is a fundamental matrix. Of the homogeneous system. So that means that x prime equals a x. And let's suppose that u satisfies x u prime equals b. And let's define xp to be equal to capital X u. So then the left-hand side of this non-homogeneous system, if we plug in xp, is, well, xp prime. Take the derivative, and since it's a product of a matrix of functions times a vector of functions, we can use the product rule. So that's x prime u plus x u prime. Now, x prime, capital X prime, is AX. And X U prime is B. So what we end up with on the left hand side is capital A capital X U plus B. And then the right hand side is A xp plus b, and if we set xp to be capital XU, that's a capital XU plus b, so we can see we get the same thing on both sides. So that explains why this recipe for u is going to give us eventually a solution xp equals capital XU to the, the non-homogeneous system of differential equations. All right, now let's do an example.
So let's solve, that is, find all solutions to x1 prime, x2 prime equals 2, 3, 3, 2, x1, x2 plus 4e to the 2t, 6e to the 2t. So that's our, our b vector. So part of our solution involves a fundamental solution, a fundamental matrix for the, the system where we don't have B on the right side. So this is NH here, and then H is X1 prime, X2 prime equals 2, 3, 3, 2, X1, X2. Well, to get a fundamental matrix for the homogeneous system, we need the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. So we take determinant of a minus lambda i and set that equal to zero. Determinant of two minus lambda three, three, two minus lambda, set that equal to zero. And that means that two minus lambda squared, which is the same as lambda minus two squared, minus nine equals zero, which means that lambda squared minus two lambda minus two lambda plus 4 minus 9 minus 5 equals 0. And we can factor that as lambda lambda minus 5 lambda plus 1. So lambda is one of the numbers negative 1 and 5. Let's look at the negative 1 eigenspace. So a minus negative 1i times let's say v equals 0. So a plus i, we're going to add 1 to the diagonal entries. So that gives 3, 3, 3, 3 right-hand side is 0, 0, and we can see that an easy solution is v1 equals 1, v2 equals negative 1. And this is the negative 1 eigenspace, so this gives us the solution e to the negative t, 1, negative 1. Now let's look at the five eigenspace. So we'll say a minus five i v equals zero. We subtract five from diagonal entries. We've got two minus five is negative three negative 3, 3, 3, negative 3, v1, v2 equals 0, 0. We can see pretty easily that uh, one solution is v1 equals 1, v2 equals 1. Negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. So we have the solution to the, the system of differential equations. The system H is e to the 5t times 1, 1. Right? Putting these two solutions together, we have a fundamental set 
or our fundamental matrix if we write it as a matrix. So we have e to the negative t, negative e to the negative t, e to the 5t, e to the 5t. Just by writing this in the first column and that in the second column. Now we have to solve x u prime equals b for u prime, and later we're going to integrate u prime. So we can do this two ways. Let's do it by real operations first. Of course, we would only have to do it by one operation, either row operations or Kramer's rule, but I want to compare and contrast. So I'm going to do both methods. So let's use row operations first. So we have e to the negative t, e to the 5t, and then the right hand side is 4e to the 2t, because b is 4e to the 2t, 6e to the 2t. And then we have negative e to the negative t, e to the 5t, 6e to the 2t. <clears throat> now we conveniently have the opposite here of the 1, 1 entry. So let's say row 2 becomes row 2 plus row 1, just to get a 0 there quickly. I think I don't have enough space to write it down here. So we have e to the negative t e to the 5t, 4e to the 2t, and then 0, e to the 5t plus e to the 5t is 2e to the 5t, and then we have 10e to the 2t here. All right, now let's divide by what we have to to get a 1 and a 1 in the diagonals to make it easy to solve. So let's say row 1 becomes e to the t times row 1, and row 2 becomes 1 half e to the negative 5t times row 2. So that gives us one if we multiply by e to the t, and then e to the 6t, and then 4e to the 3t on the right hand side, and here 0 1, just 1, 10 over 2 is 5, e to the 2t times e to the negative 5t is e to the negative 3t. And let's put this fundamental solution matrix someplace good. put it up here, e to the negative t, e to the 5t, negative e to the negative t, e to the 5t. All right, so we can solve this system now. So apparently u2 prime, and the variables are, are u1 prime and u2 prime. So u2 prime equals 5e to the negative 3t, and then u1 prime plus 6e to the t times u2 prime, 5e to the negative 3t equals 4e to the 3t. Oops, this isn't 6e to the t, that's e to the 6t. So that means u1 prime equals 4e to the 3t minus 5e to the 3t, e to the 6t times e to the negative 3t is e to the 3t, 
So this is just negative e to the 3t. So negative e to the 3t and 5e to the 3t. All right, now let's do that again using Kramer's rule. All right, so we're solving x u prime equals b for u prime. So we're going to need the determinant of x. Determinant of x is e to the negative t times e to the 5t. So that's e to the 4t minus negative e to the negative t times e to the 5t. So that's plus e to the 4t, which is 2e to the 4t. Now we set b1 to be the matrix x with b plugged in for the first column. So 4e to the 2t, 6e to the 2t, and then keep the second column the way it was, e to the 5t, e to the 5t. And u1 prime equals the determinant of b1 all over determinant of x, 2e to the 4t. So the determinant of b1 is 4e to the 7t minus 6e to the 7t. 4 minus 6 is negative 2e to the 7t over 2e to the 4t, which is negative 1 e to the negative 3t, which is what we got for, for u1 prime before, negative e to the negative 3t. All right, so I can erase this, and let's do it for, for u2 prime. So b2 So u2 prime is going to be determinant of b2 over 2e to the 4t, where b2 is this matrix with b plugged in for the second column, e to the negative t, negative e to the negative t in the first column, and 4e to the 2t, 6e to the 2t in the second column. Determinant of this matrix is 6e to the t minus negative 4e to the 2t. So 6 plus 4e to the t, because e to the 2t times e to the negative t is e to the t. So it's 10e to the t over 2e to the 4t. 10 over 2 is 5. E to the t over e to the 4t is e to the negative 3t. 5e to the negative 3t, which is good. That matches what we got for u2 prime before. So it looks like doing this by Kramer's rule is, is faster than doing the row operations. The answer pops right out there. And maybe that's true when we've got matrices that have functions of t in them because doing the row operations can be a little bit cumbersome. But anyway, either way we got here, the two methods agree that u1 prime is negative e to the 3t, u2 prime is 5e e to the negative 3t. All right now we integrate.
So u1 is the integral of u1 prime dt, and we'll let the constant of integration be 0, which is the integral of negative e to the 3t, which is negative 1 third e to the 3t. And u2 is going to be the integral of u2 prime dt with a constant of integration of 0. u2 is over here. So that's integral of 5 e to the negative 3t dt, which is negative 5 thirds e to the negative 3t. Now we're going to set xp to be equal to x times u. x is the the fundamental matrix up there, and then u is these, has these two components here. So we've got e to the negative t, negative e to the negative t in the first column, and then e to the 5t, e to the 5t in the second column. And then our u components are u1 is negative 1 third e to the 3t, and negative 5 thirds e to the 3t. So negative one third e to the two t minus five thirds e to the two t. Wait, this is a minus here. Negative five thirds e to the negative three t. So minus one third e to the two t minus five thirds e to the two t. So it's minus six thirds e to the two t. Minus six thirds is minus two e to the two t. And then the second component is plus one third e to the two t minus five thirds e to the two t plus one third minus five thirds. So it's minus four thirds e to the two t. So that's our particular solution. Now let's let's check that this actually is a solution. So this is negative 4 thirds, in case you can't see it, negative 4 thirds e to the 2t. All right, so let's check that this is a solution. All right, the left-hand side is xp prime, which is, so we'll just take the derivative of this, negative 4 e to the 2t and negative 8 thirds e to the 2t. The right-hand side is Two three three two times xp negative two e to the two t negative four thirds e to the two t plus four e to the two t six e to the two t. Hopefully this will come up to be the same as the left hand side. So that is negative 4 e to the 2t minus 4 e to the 2t. So negative 4 minus 4 e to the 2t plus 4 e to the 2t is negative 4 e to the 2t. Negative 4 and 4 cancel each other out, leaving us with negative 4 e to the 2t. And then for the second component, we have negative 6 e to the 2t minus 8 thirds e to the 2t plus 6 
e to the 2t. 6 and negative 6 cancel each other out, leaving us with negative 8 thirds e to the 2t, which is good because that's what we got on the left hand side and we can see that this is a solution because the right hand side gives us the same thing. All right, so that's our particular solution. And the set of all solutions we get by adding all possible linear combinations to the of the fundamental set of solutions to the homogeneous system. So we've got negative 4 e to the 2t minus 8 thirds e to the 2t plus any multiple we want of e to the negative t negative e to the negative t Oops, sorry, those are both negative t's, yeah. e to the negative t, negative e to the negative t. Plus any multiple we want of e to the 5t, e to the 5t. Now since the exponents are, the exponentials are the same in the two components, maybe it'd be nice to factor those out. So we could write this as e to the 2t, negative 4, negative 8 thirds, plus C1 e to the negative t, 1, negative 1, plus C2 e to the 5t, 1, 1. Then if we wanted, I guess we could combine that all into to one vector of, of functions. So we could write negative 4 e to the 2t plus c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the 5t in the first component and then the second component is negative 8 thirds e to the 2t minus c1 e to the negative t plus c2 e to the 5t so maybe that's the shortest of the three, although I think that this one is the easiest one to look at. I guess it's a matter of choice whether you like the first version, the second version, or the third version, because they're all equal. The end.